All right, so that is the, the duotone color with cut edge finish. So let me document that so you can see the difference there. Pick a different color for you. And we call it cut edge because when it transitions from the lighter to the darker color, it's as though it's been cut by a knife. It's extremely sharp. I've heard it called sharp edge as well. So the next type of coloring, we do a very similar thing. I'll label my layers. And they all start with flat coloring underneath. But if you take this flat color and then you lighten it just like we did with the duotone cut edge and then we duplicate it again and we make it dark again or we just paint with darker versions of each color. And then instead of using the lasso to cut away with a cut edge, like so, what if we use an eraser and we make that eraser a soft edge, like so? It's a much softer feel, and this is called duotone soft edge. And it works with gradients. And not only can you use a soft eraser to do it, but you can also use d different op opacities. So the advantage of soft edge is I can kind of build it up at different gradations. But you're still just splitting every local color into a light value and a dark value. And then you're just working the gradations between the two. It's a little bit more like painting. It's not quite so crisp. And it can give you some nice variations for sure. Again, I, I like to keep my lights and my dark separate so that I can adjust them after the fact individually. Right? But this is what's called duotone soft edge. And then ultimately, I could also go back and I could dodge and burn them as well. So if I wanted to burn some, some mid-tones darker, the soft brush, of course. I can do that. I'm still working in those colors, just light and dark tones. And I could dodge the highlights lighter if I wanted to do that as well. Okay, so let me label that one for you and show you some examples. So this is duotone, soft edge. So that's cut edge. So a nice example of soft edge would be this. <coughs> this is by Mike Allred. 
So you see there's lights and darks in all of those colors, in the skins, in the, in the red of the costume and the boots, in the hair, but it's kind of gradated softly between the two. You can see it in the buildings as well, these kind of softer gradations. Another example, soft edge duotone. It's a very popular thing for comic books. Here it is with lots and lots of detailed black line work. And you can see the duotone on the sword, on the blood, on the kneecap, on the gold. And it works well with heavy black line work to kind of emphasize and on the gold here. Now any more coloring than that on this and it would just get way overdone. But that leads us to our next type. <laughs> Which is a little hard to explain, so let me just show you these examples. And it's called full spectrum color. And that's basically when you don't follow any particular color rules except color theory. So this is duotone, and it, it looks very dramatic because of all the black line work that's added to the duotone. But still, every local color, like the gold of the helmet, is just split into lights and darks of that same color. In full spectrum color, you start to have different colors appearing on those objects. So her skin actually goes from purple to pink to yellow. Or a more dramatic example, and you can see on the columns here how the, the off-white column goes from blue to purple to yellow. Or in this example, how the skin tone shifts so dramatically from light blues to purples to to yellows, or in this example, which I really like, you see uh, the Wonder Woman character is actually done in duotone for the most part, soft edge duotone, but, but instead of white they add blue into the skin tones to give it kind of this otherworldly quality. But then for this really cool Hydra multi-headed dragon design, there is multiple colors <laughs> in everything, kind of iridescent. So it's shimmering like a CD or like an abalone shell. So that's what's called full spectrum color. To do that as an example is a little trickier. I just have to paint pretty much. And I might as well steal from something I think is cool. So I'll open this up with Photoshop, pull it out into its own window, and steal colors from it. And I'm going to do it on top of my flat color. All right, so how do I go about doing that? I'm going to turn off. Let me label this, my different coloring layers, except for the flat color underneath. And then I just start painting on top, basically with digital painting. So I'll make a new layer on top. I'm going to call this full spectrum color. And I'll start with the, uh, the crown. So I'll select the crown shape from my flat color layer, go to my full spectrum color layer, use my paintbrush, make it nice and big, maybe a low opacity, maybe soft. And I'll find a shadow sh color that I like. And I'll start painting it in. Little core shadow, make this crown look shinier. But notice, it's a version of yellow, but it's got more red in it. Then I'm going to go to a more orangey yellow, 
Kind of paint that in at the edges. Then this is where color theory might come in. When I have a lot of warm colors, I might want to put a slightly cooler color in. So I'm going to use this kind of greenish yellow. Put that at some edges. And I can always shift it a little bit more towards the cools if I want, using my color selector. Take its opacity down a little bit to start blending between. And you'll start seeing the opportunities you have when you're doing full spectrum color. And then you can do the same thing to everything else. So I can do it to the jewels. You can actually steal colors I've already used, kind of reflect them in the jewels, like so. Now the problem and the danger of full spectrum color is it starts to overpower the black line work pretty quickly. But it's a good way to make flames look cool. And so very often, what you'll do if if you use full spectrum color is then you'll do what are called color holds and you'll weaken your black line work by replacing it with a color or sometimes just getting rid of it altogether. But you see even in the flames I can put a little bit of blue just to make them a little bit more dynamic. Some purples. And this is a nice bridge between digital coloring and digital painting, which is basically full spectrum color without any outlines. This also obviously takes a lot more time and a lot more of a painter's sensibility towards color choices. Okay, so you see how all that painting of the, of the crown and the flames looks a little bit overdone with this black line. So if I wanted to, what I could do is make that black line into something else. And by duplicating the black line layer, by rasterizing it, and then, like they did in this Wonder Woman image, replace the black with a color instead. So they did kind of a deep purple to help blend in with the colors a little bit more. So if I take that same tact, I would go to adjustments, hue saturation, and I'll take my black lines and I'll colorize them and force them into a color. Maybe something a little warmer like so. Ooh, like a deep brown. And I can even lighten it up. Now this can be a great way, these are called color holds, to make something look like it's glowing. So if I want this blue stone to look like it's glowing, I can do a color hold on top of the black line work. And kind of replace it. Go over the blacks with this glowing jewel, this hypnotic jewel. And there'll, there'll be color holds everywhere in modern comics. So if you notice on Wonder Woman's bracelet, they just put a very subtle little color hold of a little lens flare to make it look like it's reflecting metal. And that works because it's over the top of the black lines. On the lasso, from the one of the, some of the very first images of Wonder Woman, instead of having the lasso be black with its outlines, they replace the black line with, with the dark orange to make it look golden. So those are just examples of color holds. With the blade of her sword, instead of making it a clean black line, they replaced it with gray so it looks more metallic. And thus with my flames here, it doesn't really look good to have them be dark, so if I select